Bird Thermal Line Coaxial Resistor, uh, model number 8141, rated at 250 watts continuous, um, full duty cycle, 10% um, on top of that for 10 minutes, uh, rated at 50 ohms. Picked it up on eBay, um, relatively quite cheap. I wanted to strip it down, have a look at it prior to using it. I wanted to check the oil, the dielectric oil inside it, make sure that's at the right levels. And also then check the load resistor and all the other associated parts. Very little to it. Um, this is the actual load resistor. Um, essentially a cylindrical film type resistor. Um, which then obviously gets immersed in this uh, dielectric. Uh, what I did, I got some scotch pad. Um, don't want to use wild water or anything, I don't want no contamination. And I've cleaned up this area here, which is um, makes reference to the back of the uh, the load resistor for the zero gram reference. And this effectively just drops onto there and is held in by these small screws. Um, the whole thing then just then just drops back into or is immersed back into the dielectric, um, and the retaining ring is put back on. But I thought I'd give it all a good clean and make sure it's all okay and clean up the co any contacts I could see. So I've cleaned up this, um, cleaned up the back, um, cleaned this plate as I said. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll reassemble it and as I'm reassembling it I'll just show you um, how, how it eventually goes back together. Right, I've reassembled um, the cylindrical film resistor uh, back onto its base mounting plate. It's under those uh, small retaining screws at the bottom, which I think is one, two, three, four, five, six, six screws on the bottom. Um, and then I've checked the, the seals. Um, there's a seal on the opposite side of this as well. We've checked that. The seals are still soft and malleable, so I'm just going to stick with the original seals. If you get any issue, then I'll just order some new ones. And the dielectric oil is at the, uh, the correct level, so there's no problem at all with that. And effectively all we're going to do now is to drop this back into here, um, give it a little push down, this is the major issue, is my issue got something on the base, uh, so I'm going to push that down, uh, I'm going to need both hands to do this, I'll push that down, and then effectively we've just got to put the retaining clip back on. Um, which shouldn't be an issue um, and then choose um, which front end socket we want uh, these are just held on by four screws and you can change the socket um, without having to dismantle the whole thing just take four screws off and change it um, so I'll get that done um, I'll just press this back down into place and then we'll, I'll come back to you and we'll do some tests on it it's all back together um, I won't lie this outer ring was a bit of a tight one to put back on. Um, the centre socket is no problem at all, it's just four screws. Uh, so that's no problem at all. Uh, but yeah, this, this outer ring just took a bit of squeezing and squashing with my fingers. Um, but it seems to be all back together and it's not leaking any dielectric. Uh, let me just uh, pick him up. Oh yeah, so we can get some idea of size. Um, that was what I used on the back there just so it could rest square on the on the table um, not at all but it did the job uh, but I've got a six inch rule here uh, so it'll give you some idea of the of the rough size anyway so um, and it's a it is a nice piece of kit to be honest so um, coming quite useful in the shack um, but what I'm going to do now I'm going to test the VWSR on it um, and see if it matches up to the, uh, the data sheet um, and then we'll stick a bit of power through it um, and make sure everything's still okay with it. Oh, we've got the signaling out uh, with the reflection bridge plugged into the front of the uh, coaxial resistor. Um, we've done the uh, calibration setup and these are the results that we're getting. Um, I've chose uh, rough frequencies round about the ham, ram, ham radio band, so 8, eight meg is a bit high, I suppose, but 145, 433, and 1.29 gig, um, which are a reflection of the, probably the frequencies I'll be testing at. 
Um, and we're getting VWSR of um, 1 to 1.1 1 1 roughly. <laughs> um, according to the manufacturer's data sheet, um, between these frequencies here, we should be getting 1 to 1 to 1. Uh, 1 1.2 to 1 uh, from 1 gig upwards. Um, I'm only testing um, up to uh, uh, 1.3 gig. Um, I've got nothing else that goes above that. Um, but yeah, it seems to be reading okay anyway, so it's testing out okay. Um, and what we'll do next, we'll try some uh, power measurements. Um, I just cook it for a little bit and see how it runs. Quick look up at the SWR as well on the Nano VNA. Um, it pretty much correlates um, to what the reflection bridge is seen on the uh, Sigliant spectrum analyzer um, using the uh, Aeroflex load open and short for a calibration. Um, so yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. It seems to be all working okay. So next thing now, uh, I think is shove some power into it and let it warm up a bit. And then a VNA uh, with its mesh chart, uh, various frequencies, and it has a uh, shown about 50.7 um, ohms at various frequencies. I'll just scan through them all and I'll just make sure there's nothing um, amiss. Just doing a quick soak test now. Uh, basically, plugged the Mark set SR300, um, driven by the FT991. Um, we've got an SWR meter up there, um, and if I just key that up, um, set to the largest scale at the moment, so it's just over 200 watts, and it's taking that no problem whatsoever. Um, I left it to run for about five, ten minutes. Doesn't seem to be any problem, so um, I think it's all right. Uh, got a bargain there, I think. So um, a nice piece of equipment for this shed. 